Okay, let's talk about calculus. Now, because you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that uh, you're either interested in studying calculus, or you may be just interested in what calculus is, or maybe you are actually currently a calculus student. Either way, what I'm going to try to do is give you a basic understanding, a quick introduction to this concept right here called limits. Now, we can see this right here in this notation. This is something that you would see in a calculus course. This is effectively like a calculus problem or even a pre-calculus problem. But here we have this LIM, x uh, going to infinity, 1 over x. What does this all mean? Well, this is really, really important to the foundational concepts of calculus. And you really get into this uh, pretty um, thoroughly when you actually take calculus. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is just give you a very, very, very basic introduction to the concept of limits so anyone can understand this stuff, even if you uh, have no intentions on taking calculus. But hopefully, you know, if this interests you, I'm going to suggest that you get yourself ready and take calculus as calculus is a awesome uh, mathematics. But anyways, uh, let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself before we get into limits. Uh, my name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. It really is my true passion to uh, help as many people as I possibly can learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you can be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that maybe have a fear of math or maybe you struggle in math. Listen, do not give up hope. You can absolutely uh, be excellent in mathematics. But what you need is great math instruction, i.e. whoever you learn math from or whatever uh, you're learning math from, i.e. if you're using some sort of video program, textbook, software, you have to understand what's going on. I mean, obviously math is a very technical subject and it can be taught in a very technical way. Unfortunately, uh, if you're being taught in a very technical uh, uh, manner, it's confusing. Okay, The way I like to teach math is to explain things in easy-to-understand language so everybody knows what's kind of going on without watering down what you need to actually know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're getting ready for, something like the GED, SAT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. Now, let me just tell you right now, my highest level, most advanced course is pre-calculus. So I do not teach um, a full calculus course. If you have an interest in studying calculus, i.e. going to school for it, taking a full course, I'm going to suggest that you look into... Uh, going to a local college, um, you know, something along those lines. Calculus, you know, is a very advanced math. But you, in order to take calculus, you have to get through pre-calculus to be ready for calculus. So I do offer pre-calculus. Again, you can just go to my website and check out all the information. Also, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description. Uh, you have to take great math notes to be successful math. So improve your notes and things will get much, much better. If this video helps you out, or if you like this video in some small way, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get into this concept of limits. Now, I mean, this is pretty crazy looking notation. We're like, what does this mean? You know, what is this all about? Well, let's kind of uh, take a look at an example problem to try to introduce you to this concept of limits. All right, now uh, I'm going to explain something here and hopefully you have some basic level uh uh, basic algebra knowledge, right? I'm talking about maybe like the algebra one knowledge. So what we're looking at here is what we call a function. And again, if you've taken a course like first year algebra, algebra one, you should be able to understand what this thing is. Now, what I've done is graph this function. So this is more or less the graph of this function. Now, why this is the graph, that's a whole other topic, but just kind of trust me, if we were to graph this, this would be the function. And you can see here, we have this whole right here okay so here's the x-axis here's the y-axis here at one there's a hole okay now why is there no graph right there okay effectively i can kind of just erase that right there that's like a missing part of the graph You're like hey what happened to the graph here it's missing so we'll just put a little hole like that well it's missing because at one okay right there we cannot evaluate this function for one well we can try right let's see what happens when we try 
So if we wanted to find f of 1, i.e. this point right there, we would go, what, 1. We would replace all these x's with 1, and we got 1 cubed minus 1 over 1 minus 1. And here we run into problems. This is a good way to blow up this function, and we don't want to do that, right? I mean, that's the last thing we need. So 1 minus 1 is what? Is 0, okay? So you can never have 0 in the denominator. That will blow you up your function, and then you have other problems. So we have to restrict 1 from the domain. Okay, I'm kind of using some algebra terms here terms here, excuse me. So 1 cannot be part of the domain because if we plug in 1, again, we're going to blow up the function and we don't want that to happen. All right, so again, uh, uh, because 1 cannot be part of the domain, i.e. the set of input values, when we graph this, we have to just show, hey, there's a hole here. There's no value because 1 is restricted from this function. So this uh, function technically I could should put a uh, I should put x cannot be equal to 1 for the reason why I just said okay no problem but here's the deal you can see here if we kind of look along this graph if we kind of approach 1 okay we do have values here right so in other words so right here this is one half this is one and uh, one and a half and here's two i mean there's values along this graph what happens if we get like super close to one in other words as we approach one from both sides what is the value going to be right here now we, we're approaching from the left and we're approaching it to the right so we're trying to get super super close to this uh, off limit value okay so what is that actual value if we get infinitely close imagine if we get like really 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 close from the left and from the right now we can't touch one but what would be this value okay so this is kind of just a real kind of basic uh, explanation of the concept of limits. What we're trying to do is to, to determine this value that as if we approach this uh, one, okay, right on this particular graph, as we get closer and closer to it from the left and right, what would be the, um, if we got infinitely close to it, what would be the actual value? So we would try to find the limit, okay? So that's what this is called. We're trying to uh, get the actual value right there if we get infinitely close to it, but we don't touch it. All right, so hopefully that basic explanation uh, makes some sense. That is the whole idea of limits. Now, when you study calculus formally, there is a lot to this. There's a stuff called epsilon and delta, and there's a lot of rules to limits. And, you know, if you take calculus, if you're intending to be a full, you know, uh, go, enroll in a full calculus course, you'll learn all about this. So, so this video, again, is intended just to give anyone out there, even those of you that are, have no intention of taking calculus, just a basic uh, flavor, a basic sense of what limits are about. So let's go ahead and take this to the next level. So let's try to determine what that value would be, okay? As we approach one from both the left and right, i.e. we want to find the limit of this function as it approaches one, okay? So we would use this fancy notation. So here you can see this is our uh, function uh, f of x is equal to x cubed minus one over x minus one. So we can write this fancy notation right here. So we want to find the limit as x approaches one, okay? Now you could approach a function from the left and right. Again, I'm just gonna leave, uh, I'm not gonna get overly technical for this quick introduction to limits, but basically we can write this right here. So what is the value of this function as x approaches one? Of course, uh, x can never be one, but what it would be the, uh, you know, what, what number, what value is it approaching from both the left and right hand side of the graph? Well, if we wanna figure that out, we would do this, we would find out we would want to ask the question, all right, what's the limit as x approaches 1 to this function? So now let's go ahead and talk about how we actually answer this question. Okay, so what we have to uh, do is use our algebra knowledge, okay? So again, you're taking calculus, you should have some strong algebra skills, certainly, um, you know, a requirement. But here, this x cubed minus 1, this is actually something called the difference of two cubes, and we can use our awesome factoring skills to factor x cubed minus 1 this way. So the x cubed minus 1 is equal to x minus 1 times this trinomial, x squared plus x plus 1, and then we have that over x minus 1. Now, the lovely thing about factoring this function, 
this way is that these x minus 1, uh, these factors, uh, cross cancel. Okay, so we want to kind of use our algebra skills and get rid of um, fractions if we can. There's all different sorts of techniques to evaluating the limits of uh, respective functions or uh, various functions. So here is uh, an opportunity where you can factor, definitely factor and simplify uh, that function that you're looking at. All right, so we're going to cross cancel these factors. So effectively, uh, our problem is now down to this. You see how we cross cancel this. Now, we're going to find the limit as x approaches 1 of this trinomial here. So how do we do that? Well, there is a basic um, kind of theorem, a uh, law property that you learn in calculus, but I'm basically going to simplify it. When we're finding the limit of a constant value in a situation like this, it's literally as easy as just plugging in this number. Okay, so this number 1, we're just going to plug it in to this um, uh, function. Now, here we have no denominator, no restrictions on this, like x minus 1. So we can plug in 1 right here, not a problem. So that's going to be what? 1 squared plus 1 uh, plus 1. So when I do all this, you get 3. And that is the answer. Okay, so effectively, the limit as x approaches 1 of our original function here is 3. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's go back and take a look at our graph right here. So recall that our graph had this hole in it at 1. But effectively, as we get closer and closer to uh, 1 on this function from both the left and right, we're, going, we're getting super close to 3. Okay, that's basically what it means. So this coordinate right there would be 1, 3. Now, of course, we can't ever touch it with that 1, but that's effectively what that means. Okay, so hopefully that, you know, makes sense to you. This is a basic uh, limit problem. Let's talk uh, about finding the limit when something is approaching infinity. Okay, so you can, uh, the last problem we talked about was the limit when a number, x, was approaching a constant value like uh, 3 or 1. But what happens when x is approaching affinity? Well, infinity, excuse me, not affinity. Affinity means um, a pretty, uh, let me, um, because I said the word, affinity is like you like something, right? That's pretty much it. Or you have an affinity for something. So hopefully you have an affinity for an affin <laughs> infinity. Uh, you know, I should just really stick to the math because my jokes are not that good. But anyways, you know, we're trying to make this an easygoing video. All right. So anyways, uh, we have the limit as x goes to infinity 1 over x. So what does that mean? Well, Let's, uh, you know, let's just kind of think about this for a second. Infinity is what? It's a very large number, right? This is a big number. So one thing you can kind of do is like, all right, we have 1 over the biggest number in the universe, right? 1 over the biggest number in the universe. That's what x is approaching to. So what is kind of going on here? Well, let's just start looking at some patterns of fractions as the denominator gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And, of course, this thing is going to get infinitely big. So here we have one half. All right, so let's just start increasing that denominator one tenth, and then we have one over thirty thousand. What's going on with these values, right? Like if you're comparing the values, well, hopefully you recognize that this uh, fraction here is much much smaller uh, in terms of value as this number. So as we increase the denominator, the overall uh, value of the fraction is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, right? So here, for example, here is 1, here is uh, 0, okay? As we increase the uh, uh, fractions or the denominators here, right, we're going closer and closer to what? Well, we're getting close, we're basically decreasing the whole value of this thing, okay? We started off here with 1 half, and then we're kind of, you know, really getting down over here. But now I want you to kind of guess, right? What do you think is going to happen when we take that denominator, we make it infinitely large. Where are we approaching? Okay, what value are we approaching? And I'm kind of giving you a hint right there, right? So hint, hint, hint. If you said zero, you would be absolutely correct. So we have this basic rule here. The limit as x approaches infinity, 1 over x is zero. Okay, so this is pretty much a very basic kind of rule or property when you're uh, uh, studying uh, limits where a value is approaching infinity or uh, infinity, excuse me. So in calculus, 
when you're talking about limits, you're talking about when values are uh, approaching uh, particular constants, and then you do a lot with infinity as well. Let's take a look at a quick problem, and then we'll wrap this up. So here, let's figure out this function. The limit as x goes to infinity, we have pi times the square root of 3 over x squared. So to figure this out, we have to use our awesome um, algebra skills, okay? So you can see algebra is coming up over and over again in calculus, all right? You have to be super strong in uh, high school level mathematics to be successful in algebra. Now, there are some high school students that take AP calculus. I'm sorry, uh, yes, uh, let me just make sure I said this right. You have to have super strong algebra skills. Uh, and that's why, you know, being, um, you know, successful in a course like pre-calculus is going to set you up for success in calculus. So if you struggle with, you know, high school level algebra, algebra one, algebra two, you know, college algebra, pre-calculus, you're gonna have a tough time in calculus because you're gonna need all those strong algebra skills. But anyways, what we can do here is factor this. So we need to look for creative ways to factor this expression. So we can factor this this way, pi, times the square root of 3 times 1 over x times 1 over x. Because 1 over x times 1 over x, this right here, if I multiply these together, this is 1 over x squared. 1 over x squared times this gets us back to this. But I want to kind of factor all this out. And then what we're going to do is take the limit of each of those factors. That's another rule that we can do. So we can find the limit of the first factor as x goes to infinity. And then we have the limit of the second factor, which is one over x as x goes to infinity, and then that's uh, gonna be multiplied by the limit of one over x as x goes to infinity. Now, when we're um, uh, looking to evaluate a limit as x go goes to infinity of a constant, it's just simply gonna be that number. But here, we just figured out what the limit as x goes to infinity one over x, right? We just went through that and we, that's gonna be zero, right? Because our denominator is gonna be infinitely large. So when we evaluate this limit, that's zero. And then this one right here is also gonna be zero. So zero times zero times pi times the square root of three is what? That's just going to be zero. So our final answer here would be zero. Okay, so calculus is a awesome course. I mean, there is a ton to learn. But, you know, what I try to do with these videos is try to, you know, get those of you out there that are interested in calculus, excited about the concepts in calculus. And, you know, uh, you know try to really, really uh, give you these really um, kind of basic introductions to some of the meanings of calculus. Now, if you happen to be a calculus professor or whatnot, you're like, well, you're missing this, you're missing that, you should have said this. Well, listen, I get that. But this is not designed to be a formal calculus lesson. You know, uh, you know, those of you that are actually taking the course will get all that kind of good stuff. But uh, even if you don't take calculus, at least the next time, you know, uh, you see this notation, you're like, oh, yeah, I kind of know what that means. It means a limit, and you'll at least have some basic reference to this. And, um, again, if you are going to be taking calculus, you need to be absolutely successful at the pre-calculus level. So if you need help in pre-calculus, just go to my main website under my middle and high school level mathematics. You'll see my pre-calculus uh, uh, course, and that can really, really help you out if you happen to be at that level. Okay, so if this video was interesting, even in the slightest, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.